Hello world, welcome to episode 5 of Circuit TV. Uh, today we have another exciting episode. We're going to be talking today about home automation, some future technology, and some ways that uh, you can accomplish it at home all by yourself. So we've got a couple really cool builds, um, got a couple guests here with me. We got uh, Roy. Roy's going to take you through how to put a security camera on your front door um, instead of your uh, normal peephole as well as we've got a exciting project about all kinds of different home automations uh, from our friends over at ASU. And uh, Sam, the general manager here at Circus Specialist, is gonna take you on a tour of our front office, as well as uh, walk you through that project that we collaborated on with the ASU students. So, we're talking about home automation. What is home automation? What is this smart home? So the smart home is basically turning your home, your living space, into a connected device. And now that can be accomplished with a bunch of different boards, a bunch of different technologies readily available to make this stuff happen. Um, but one of the, the keys to it is to improve the overall efficiency of the way that your home runs. So this can be in the form of security. This can be in the form of you know being able to open your garage door. Uh, make sure everything is locked, basically uh, monitor things with the security cameras. Possibilities are endless and every day we're seeing more and more technology and uh, people developing different things to make things uh, work well. Um, so one of the places to begin with your home automation projects is with the board. So I've got a couple boards with me right now. I've got the Raspberry Pi got the photon this is the particle photon which this is actually um, this is set up specifically as a IOT device and when we say IOT of course we mean Internet of Things which the Internet of Things is basically anything that you connect to the Internet to give it more functionality cameras not working okay so Particle Photon, awesome device, IoT, connects basically anything to the internet and then you can run an app through your smartphone to do cool stuff. So one way that we actually use this Photon um, here at Circuit Specialist is with the uh, garage opener with status update. Now this, we used the Particle Photon connected into the garage door opening mechanism and what we were able to accomplish is actually by sending a text message you could open the garage door with the photon as well as receive statuses um, when the garage door opens so if you're at work and you get a text message hey the garage door is open I'm not at the garage so something must be going on <laughs> another uh, controller that you're probably familiar with if you've been watching circuit TV is the Arduino um, the Arduino is not internet connected of course but it is a fantastic microcontroller and uh, gives you a lot of different functionality um, with the release of the Raspberry Pi 3, they actually did give these guys built-in Wi-Fi, um, BEG and wireless, um, and they rock for that. Um, and these boards only cost you about 40 bucks. They've got HDMI, four USBs, Ethernet, Wi-Fi, audio out, mini USB, as well as a tons of headers to uh, connect your projects, and an SD card. And we're actually gonna show you how to use one of these later. Um, in a project for like home security. So now I'm going to take you over to Sam. Sam is our general manager here at Circus Specialist and what he's going to do is take you on a little tour of our front retail space um, as well as show you a project that we worked on with ASU on home automation. So we're going to send it over to Sam. Hi, I'm Sam and welcome to Circuit Specialist in Tempe. I'm the general manager here and I run the day-to-day -day operations. Uh, come stop by sometime. We're on the corner of Fairmont and Hardy, just in uh, the industrial park of Tempe. You can pick up a catalog where you can read about some of our products. This is our front counter area. If you come into our store, this is where you'll be purchasing uh, your products. Um, over here you've got chemicals by MG Chemicals, uh, a lot of great electronics. Um, chemicals for, for you to use. Flux remover, superwash, uh, ferric chloride for, for all of your electronics prototyping needs. Uh, some additional 
chemicals here. And if we come around the store a bit, you can see that we've got some, some great deals here on refurbished goods. So sometimes we'll ha have a product come in with a damaged box, such as this item here, or uh, a customer simply uh, won't need one of our products because it doesn't fit their application. So come by, we've got great deals on, on all these goods. Um, again, s some additional items here, such as these digital multimeters for under $10. It's a great deal, and uh, if you come by, you don't have to pay shipping for any of these products, so it's a great way to save. Uh, if you follow it a little bit further, we've got all this heat shrink tubing here for all of your wire insulating needs. Got it in various colors and sizes. Uh, it's actually a product we use quite a bit ourselves, uh, so I, it's a great great thing to have handy in your in your electronics shop. Here's the, the the kind of the front door here, customer entrance, and if we follow it a little bit further around the store, you'll see we've got our new item display shelf where we've got some of our newer items. Uh, as you can see here, we, we're carrying a digital tachometer which allows you to measure the RPM of your of your motors. It's great great HVAC tool or great um, tool for anyone that's really doing any kind of motor testing. Uh, we've also got an anemometer, another new product here, which uh, will allow you to measure, accurately measure a range of uh, air speeds or wind speeds. So, so come by um, and you can learn more about those products. Uh, today, since we're talking about home automation, we wanted to really highlight a project we recently did with ASU and the Polytechnic campus where we challenged students to develop a home automation system for us uh, using open source components and to make a really low cost design. So uh, here we have kind of what they came up with. And so it, it was based off of um, a system with the, the Banana Pie, which you can see here. Banana Pie is uh, part of our catalog and we also carry the Raspberry Pi, which isn't too far away here. So th those could actually both support a system like this. But uh, so for their project, they use the Raspberry Pi as well as the Raspberry Pi screen. Um, and the protocol that they based it off of was the Zigbee uh, protocol using XB radios. So Zigbee is, a, is a developed by the IEEE and it's used for home automation to power low power electronics. It's the standard of communication between those devices. So that's what they used here and, and they're pretty low cost and um, they actually were able to achieve wireless communication between their central module which co consisted of the Raspberry Pi and the Raspberry Pi screen um, and each of the different modules that you see here. So just to go through them, so, so using a Python program which they developed um, and loaded onto the Raspberry Pi, onto the Banana Pi, sorry, uh, they, they, first you can see the program that they developed here. So on the, on the screen, if you can read it, um, maybe we can do a zoomed in shot here. You've got a few different uh, windows within that, a few different squares within that window. You've got a fan, a light, you've got a security system, uh, a Windows system and Windows status, and an HVAC system. I want to focus a little bit on the user interface that they developed. So they created this program using Python and uh, it's designed to be open source and it, as you can see from the, the panel here, the Banana Pi panel, you've got a few different sections of the program. You've got room one, you've got the HVAC system here, you've got a security system, window system, and then you've got system status in the bottom right. So let's go through a few of these. Uh, again, most of these are wirelessly connected to this central module so you'd be able to control this either from you know your living room or remotely even so and you also get system statuses so you can go here we turn on the fan and as you can see this fan which is on an XB radio actually gets powered on let's go ahead and turn that off we can go on and demonstrate the light here on the left again something that would be very convenient to have uh, be able to control, you know, wirelessly through, through a central system. They've also got a security system here that would actually give you notifications if, as you can see, there's this, there's this read switch, read sensor here, which uh, would tell you if, if uh, a door is open that shouldn't be open. So you can arm it 
here, and as you can see, it, it is armed, and it's got an intruder uh, message that comes up here, so it gives them a, a notice that uh, you know some something opened that shouldn't have opened. So we'll go ahead and turn that off so that uh, nobody's worried via their email. Up on the top right, we've got the HVAC system here, so you can actually have a set point, and it gives you a current temperature status, humidity status, and so right now we're below the the um, set, I'm sorry, the set temperature is 72 and the current temperature is 78. So it's kind of a, just a demonstration of it, how a thermostat control would work since its, its thermostat unit is, is huge. Uh, so basically this fan is turned on to demonstrate cooling over the, over the thermistor inside the box. If we raise this set temperature up above 78, then you'll actually see that the, uh, the fan will turn off. Give it just a moment. So it, it actually takes a little while to do that, so we'll just, we'll just uh, move on from there. Uh, the, next, the next device you see here is, is the, uh, this is designed to be uh, a security camera, and it's a pan and tilt mechanism that they actually 3D print they, they 3D print a lot of these parts on our, on our Robox printer. So let's demonstrate how that can kind of pan and tilt for you. See the, the 3D printed gears in there, and we've got a couple of our servos inside. Unfortunately, the, uh, the Raspberry Pi camera that was associated with this It's not mounted here currently, but it's a, it's a great demonstration of how that system would work. So, now we'd, I'd like to show you behind the, uh, the, the, the project board here, you get a kind of a look inside. Connected, uh, you've got a bread, a controller, several, several Arduinos. Um, OSEP Arduinos, which they, they found here at our sh shop. You've got the, the banana pie module in there. So all in all, it's a pretty low cost DIY home automation system and uh, we've got a lot of posts on our blog about it, so feel free to check in there and, and learn more. And uh, you can do build one of these and uh, back to you. Are we? Yeah. Okay, <laughs> until I've done this a lot. Uh, Roy from Circuit Specialists. Uh, today I'm gonna talk about a little project that I did uh, at my house. Uh, I have a home office in the backside of my house that uh, somebody comes to the doorbell, it drives me nuts that I can't tell who's there, so I've been using the Raspberry Pis for several other projects. I did an aircraft receiver. I have my home weather station on the, uh, the raspberries and the bananas. Uh, they work really great. So the Raspberry Foundation came out with their uh, eight megapixel camera. I thought, I'd, hey, here's an idea. Got a peephole in a door, put a uh, camera looking through the, uh, the peephole. And from anywhere in the house with a tablet, with my laptop, with a desktop, I can uh, bring up the uh, the camera and see what's going on in the front door. Uh, so what I did was I 3D printed a, uh, a little mount. Uh, this is uh, designed to go on a 3D printer, but uh, I repurposed it to, uh, to use it on the front door. In this position, it's looking out through the, uh, the peephole, but if I'm in the living room and I need to look through the, uh, the peephole, I just flip it back and it lays flat against the door and it works great and I just took also 3D printed a, a neat little case that uh, the Raspberry goes in and uh, it works great uh, holds the Raspberry Pi I just double stick taped it to the door uh, if you've got a metal door you could put a magnet on it use a magnet uh, double stick tape works great uh, Raspberry Pi again, like Cody was showing earlier. Uh, you know, it works great for 
the purpose. Uh, it just, you go into the, the camera connector, it uh, runs the camera. Uh, I use the standard uh, Raspberry Pi camera interface uh, software, so you just basically go to a web address on a browser, you've got the camera, uh, full resolution, it's really great. Later on I'm going to use a different piece of software and I'll be able to cast it out through the internet. But uh, obviously you want to make a password on it so uh, you don't broadcast your nocturnal TV watching habits if you happen to have the, you know, the camera pointing back into the living room. Uh, got some video that uh, shows how I mounted it to the door. Uh, it's pretty straightforward, like I say, double stick tape. Uh, you run a power line over to the door, make sure you, you put it to where the hinge is, you know, it's on the right side so you got uh, power and everything. Uh, and as you can see there on the, uh, the video, uh, I need to dress it up a little bit better. I haven't got the, uh, the power line taped to the, you know, to the door yet, but it does the job. Uh, eventually, I think I'll reprint one in black because green on the front door looks a little bit a little bit uh, a little bit weird but that's okay uh, I think a little later on it uh, it there you know there it was set uh, the video was set with the uh, the peephole visible for from inside the room I think a little bit further into the video there's uh, some views from uh, the door itself or the camera itself uh, you know, we'll see what uh, what it comes up with. I think I shot a little too much video there, but that's okay. Uh, it it uh, trucks along here. <laughs> uh, again, the uh, the software that's out there that comes with the uh, with the unit itself uh, does perfectly well for inside. You know, your internal network. Uh, you'd have to open a port if you were going to use that software from outside the internet, but security there would be a little bit a uh, little bit lax uh, there'd be no passwords or anything and say, unless you really like broadcasting what's happening out in front of your house uh, you know you'd want to use a little bit you know a little bit more secure software uh, and there you know it's a little bit closer up view of, of how it's mounted let me say just double stick tape uh, the foam tape you can buy anywhere you know it it does a great job the the raspberry pi is not very heavy so it's you know it's not gonna you know not gonna fall off the door uh, again there's the mount set to where it's looking through the peephole uh, i think there's a few more seconds of video here that uh, shows that uh, okay there there's my tablet with the uh, the camera looking through the peephole uh, you know, you can do it with a desktop, you can do it with uh, your phone even, anything that, uh, that has a web interface or a web browser. Uh, it was, I think on my home network, 192.168.1. whatever that uh, actual address was. Uh, I think a second shot that's coming up here also has it with the camera turned around the other way. Uh, yeah, here it's just pointing back into the living room. Uh, you can use that if you know once it's set up to uh, to broadcast out over the internet. If you're not home, say on vacation or whatever, it's nice to be able to log in and uh, and see what's happening. And then back to me here. That's the end of that video there. So it's pretty straightforward, uh, very easy. We'll have a link to uh, a blog article on how to uh, how to set this up uh, on our website, CircuitSpecialist.com. Uh, I think the camera is about thirty dollars, thirty-five dollars. You know, again, like Cody said, the uh, the Raspberry Pi is uh, forty bucks. If you've got a USB uh, five volt power supply, that's all you need to power it with. I recommend at least two amps if you're running both the camera and the uh, the Raspberry Pi three. It's a great little board. It's got Wi-Fi built into it. It's got Bluetooth built into it. And there's other things that you can do with it. Even while it's hanging on the door, you could run a you could run a web server even on it. It's it's pretty cool, and uh, you know I'm going to turn this over here in just a minute back to uh, to Cody, and uh, he's got some more goodies for you, and uh, pop over to uh, the screen there, and <laughs> we'll see what 
what Cody's got uh, got for us. Actually, I think I'll just hop over one. You know and, what? Uh, I don't have much else for the beautiful people of Facebook right now, though. But we got to close it off. Yeah, yeah I, I, <laughs> I do got to say that that, uh, that Raspberry Pi camera, that was definitely a cool build, and I think that uh, anybody can try that at home. We're going to make it real simple. We're going to put the code and all of the resources that you need to get the Raspberry Pi going. We're going to put that all on a blog. You can look forward to that coming out either uh, today, Friday, or maybe even Saturday morning. Just got to get all that information together for you and make it uh, all concise for you. Yeah, the basic blog is already published. It's up there now. Uh, my contact info is on the, uh, on the blog. If you guys have any questions on it, just, uh, just pop us a message. I'd be happy to, to help you with it. It's really simple to do. Uh, I'm certainly not a programmer, so the heavy-duty stuff I'll have to defer, but, you know, we'll get you up and set. Uh, again, I had a ball doing it. Uh, I think this is my third uh, Raspberry in the house, and it sure beats uh, wasting a three, four hundred dollar computer for something that can be done for forty bucks. There you go, Raspberry Pi making it easy and cheap, huh? Yep. So, and then uh, this, this box is this a file that they can get to? yeah on the uh, the blog there's a link to uh, to that box and to the uh, camera mount and for the door that camera mount just worked beautifully I, I stuck it to the door uh, flipped it over into the uh, to the doorbell or to the doorbell uh, to the uh, peephole and just beautifully another thing I'm going to add to the uh, to this project later uh, I'm going to try to uh, use one of our uh, our key fob remotes into the uh, the I/O pins and add a uh, doorbell. Uh, that way, I can have a like a Wi-Fi uh, notification that uh, somebody rang the doorbell. Uh, and it, what I'd like to have it do is automatically kick on the camera, you know, on my web browser. It's going to take a little bit more programming to do that, but you know. Maybe somebody out there will help me uh, with that part of it. You know, <laughs> we are always open to suggestions. Yep. If you have suggestions for a build or a Raspberry Pi project that you'd like to see, feel free to send us a message either on Facebook. You can send it to Roy at Circuit Specialist. You can send it to Josh at Circuit Specialist. We got a whole team of people here, and we're uh, always looking to do cool stuff here. So, um, other than that, Roy, do you have anything else? No, nope, I think that's it. All right. Well, hey, I'm Cody. Roy, got Josh here running the, uh, the back end. <laughs> Hi, Josh. <laughs> so thank you all very much for joining us. TV live on Facebook here. We're also going to be uploading this onto YouTube. So if that's a more convenient channel for you, you can also find it there. Um, shout out to our friends on Facebook and YouTube as well. Electro Boom, um, Todd Fun. And we've got Adam, we've got a couple other people who are looking forward to some new reviews coming out. So stay tuned, stay updated on our blog, uh, subscribe to the newsletter. Um, you can find the links to that all on the website, circuitspecialist.com. Um, and that's definitely the best way to stay in the loop is between the newsletter, blog, and Facebook. So we look forward to seeing you next time. Thank you all very much.